Since we're making silver jewelry, I thought I'd give you a few ideas about using coins. Now, this is old Australian money. From 1910 to 1945, Australian silver coins are literally silver. They're 92.5 sterling. Uh, from 46 to 64, they're 50% silver, and after 64, uh, there was only one coin, the 1966 50 cent piece, that was 80% silver. This is threepence, sixpence, shilling, and florin. A florin is worth two shillings. They made a crown, which is bigger, which is about the size of the U.S. 50 cent piece. Uh, but they only made it in 1937 and 1938. Now, because this is sterling silver, you could use the smaller coins to make beads. So you just form them into a hemisphere, solder them together. It's what the uh, Native Americans did early when they were uh, forced introduced, first introduced to silver money by Europeans. Uh, if you dome this in a wooden block, it'll keep the pattern. If you dome it in a uh, steel or a brass block, you have to be careful because it'll erase part of the pattern. Uh, you can see that I've made bracelets with the threepence. And what you do is you solder, rather than just drilling a hole in it and looking a bit shoddy, you solder real small jump rings on the side. Uh, lay this on a flat charcoal block, file the edges of the jump rings just a little uh, so that they fit quite nicely against the side. Now the trick is to have the thickness of the wire for your jump rings the same thickness as your, as your coin. That way it looks more aesthetic. So the bigger the coin, the thicker the jump ring. Now, I've made rings, which are, these are out of shillings, which are a quite nice size. And they solder just like regular silver. So you just solder your band on the back. This is uh, George V on this side and the Australian uh, seal on this side. I'll, I'll shift up so you can see. So I, I think they're quite aesthetic, and it's nice having a little bit of history. Now these are charms that I made, the Thomas Sabo style, and it's just, once again, the small jump ring, and then a clip, just to clip it onto a charm bracelet. These are pendants. This is a uh, floor in here, which is it, it's a nice size for a pendant, and by soldering this on so that it's the small jump ring, it, it's articulated so it, it moves quite easily. Uh, earrings are quite easy, either the uh, threepence or the sixpence. So that's the threepence, that's a sixpence. Once again, Solder a small jump ring on and then put your ear wire through the jump ring. It looks a lot more like real jewelry rather than just craft work. So that's it. If you want to use silver coins for your jewelry, I suggest you use the ones that are real silver. Some of the American coins are what they call coin silver, which is 80% which is okay. I just go on Google and have a look. Whatever your, whatever your country, I mean British and Australian is quite easy uh, because up until 45 all of the silver coins were actually silver. Uh, I'm sure it's the same for New Zealand. But go on Google, look at whatever country's coins you're using 
and just make sure that they're at least 80% silver. The After 64 in the US, there's no silver in the coins. There's a lot of nickel and they tarnish quite easily and, and they really tarnish when you're trying to solder them. So coin jewelry is great. It's nostalgic and it's quite easy to work with. It's just because it's sterling silver, you just treat it like silver. Go to work. A good source for the coins is eBay. Uh, just make sure that it really is silver and don't pay over the going price for silver. So these days it's about $1.50 a gram. Uh, and don't worry about getting really high quality coins because for what we're doing it's not worth it. When, whenever you solder something onto a coin you actually destroy its value to a collector. So you, you can buy what they call junk silver. It just makes sure that it's all silver. And uh, it, you can buy this stuff by the kilo. So it's uh, if you don't want to make jewelry with it, you can actually melt it down and turn it into ingots because it is sterling silver. But uh, when you're doing that, don't pay over 70 cents a gram for it if you're just going to melt it down. eBay.